my name is Margaret Fisher. I'm a parishioner at Nativity. I was asked if I have a special devotion to a particular saint, and if so, would I be willing to speak about it on this series for YouTube? I do have a particular devotion to our Blessed Mother that is rooted as far back as my early childhood. I credit Mary with my reversion to our beautiful faith. My seventh child is even named after her, but many Catholics have a deep personal devotion to Mary, so I wanted to bring the story of my unexpected but very real encounter with one saint who I envision as the rock star of heaven, St. Augustine. I am a revert. My faith story includes a very long period where I most certainly was not practicing my Catholic faith. I had always identified as a Catholic and I never stopped believing in God, but I was not attending Mass. I had no relationship with Jesus whatsoever. My knowledge of my faith and the prayers I knew how to recite were vestiges left over from 8th grade CCD class. My husband was going through RCIA and a long annulment process several years ago. His desire to become Catholic prompted me to learn more and I got drawn in deeper and deeper in the most profound and beautiful and gentle way that can only be explained by divine intervention. Steve was granted his declaration of nullity by the tribunal in early December 2018 and that opened the way forward for both of us to be received in full communion, which included our convalidation in January of 2019, just a few weeks after the annulment came through. The lead up to that sacrament was long and hard, so in the weeks prior, my level of pure joy and anticipation was off the charts. I love music, I love to sing, and when I'm in the car, I'm that girl who rolls up the windows, I crank up the radio, and I belt it out Celine Dion style. Probably to great amusement of the passers-by at a stoplight. One particular song got to me and I was singing my heart out to it all week prior to the wedding. It was on a Christian album by a man named Michael Gungor, and it was called Late Have I Loved You. The lyrics go like this, Late have I loved you, beauty so ancient so new. You were within me, but I was outside you, and it was there that I searched for you. You were here within me, but I was not with you, and it was there that you found me. You called and you shouted, you broke through my deafness, you flashed and you shone, dispelled all my blindness, you breathed your fragrance on me. I drew in my breath and I keep on breathing, I've tasted and seen and now I want more, cause you breathed your fragrance on me, late have I loved you. I thought this songwriter was a genius. These words are incredible! Little did I know he was not the author. As I later learned, those words belong to someone else. Fast forward to the wedding. This is about a week later. Father Vaccaro is giving his homily. Important to note that we had not talked about my car singing habit or the fact that I was playing this song on repeat as na ad nauseum for a week. Father commented that his homily was from the heart, no notes, and that he was praying about it, and St. Augustine kept coming to mind. He explained who he was to all of us. I actually had no idea who St. Augustine was, that's true. I was captivated by the homily and learned that this saint is ancient and he is responsible for creating the genre of autobiography. But then something crazy happened. Father Vaccaro said that during his prayer, the words of St. Augustine came clearly to him and related to us as a couple. And the words that came to him were, late have I loved you. What? <laughs> That's my song. So Gungor was not the lyrical genius, but actually it was St. Augustine. My mind was completely blown during my wedding ceremony. I grabbed Steve's hand and I burst into tears and I whispered to my husband excitedly, Steve, St. Augustine, he's right here. He's at our wedding. Fast forward now to Mary's baptism in December. We had a baby nine months later. During the baptism homily, Father Vaccaro noted that the day was the feast day of St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose was a friend of St. Augustine and he baptized St. Augustine. So there he was again, St. Augustine made his presence known at our daughter's baptism to welcome her into the community and the church. I realized that I had a trustworthy friend in St. Augustine, a true friend and supporter from heaven. Three months later, COVID. I'm a dentist and my ability to support my family comes from being up close and personal in someone's mouth and saliva. 
and that's where all this virus comes from. My husband was over 65. I had an infant at home. I cried in my boss's office, paralyzed by true fear that my presence at work was going to kill my family. I was fighting anxiety on the way to work every single morning. Soon after that, the government shut down and we civilians were sent home on safety leave while the active duty courageously and dutifully stayed back to man our clinic. While home, I took a course on Audible on St. Augustine. My son's going to be confirmed this year and his saint paper is due in January. He chose St. Augustine because of the grand gesture he made at our wedding and baptism. I wanted to learn more about his life just basically so I could help Matthew with his paper. This course walked you through the confessions. That's St. Augustine's autobiography, chapter by chapter. I came to a section where St. Augustine is describing the deep pain he felt by the death of his best friend. This caught my attention because my husband had just lost his second son, and our close friends were in the throes of losing their daughter unexpectedly. I was afraid that I was next in line to have to give up one of my beloved. I went straight to Augustine's text on this in the Confessions rather than relying on the lecture synopsis. Here was my friend in heaven guiding me, teaching me, and comforting me. He wrote, I have loved him as though he would never die. What madness to love a man as something more than human. My heart miraculously changed reading these words. It was instant. My mind finally understood. I was loving my husband and children as if they were immortal, which is disordered. Only God is immortal. How silly of me. I get it now. So we have to love in God. My, when we do this, we understand that they are not gone. They're just gone ahead. My children are given to me by God as if they're on loan. I've been granted them by God as custodians of their souls, but they are his first. He can call them home whenever he wants. I don't control this. But God is good and he loves me deeply. He would never do anything to ultimately hurt me. Pain and suffering is real, but he will turn it to good. This newfound perspective and understanding lifted my fear like the way a big heavy velvet curtain swiftly rises up to reveal a magical scene of a ballet or opera at the theater. That curtain is heavy and it's dense and you can't see through it. So is my fear. But then it was just like it just went away. Thank you, St. Augustine. You walked this earth about 1,500 years ago, but you remain relevant and present to me here in Burke, Virginia in 2020. I have a brilliant new friend, and I love him in God.